All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, part two of our, our epic Simpson Desert Hay River track experience here. And as you can see, we're still on Lake Caroline here, and we're cleaning up a bit of a mess. We had our long life milk bust in the bottom of the fridge, so yeah, had to clean, uh, pull everything out of the fridge and uh, and clean all that up and get all that squared away, which is you know, part and parcel with travelling in these remote corrugated areas. But uh, basically, from here, we uh, jumped back in the cruiser and then made our way back over the Hay River itself. And as I mentioned in the last episode, this part of the Hay River where you're crossing lots of riverbeds, a little bit confusing on the ground, but uh, we managed to navigate our way back across the way we came. And then once you get back across that Hay River, obviously we're then turning right and heading further south. So this uh, next section of the Hay River track, guys, heading south from Lake Caroline, the landscape changed quite a bit. Um, first up, it was quite open and bloody beautiful country. Not a lot of sand dunes to deal with. Obviously, we are heading south. So we crossed a few little sort of minor sand dunes, but by and large, the country here was pretty open and relatively easy going. We were able to get a bit of speed up in this section. However, it did change. We got to a section where we started to crisscross the Hay River itself. And it was here that it started to get quite tight with vegetation quite close to the track and uh, quite windy, very slow going, 10, 15 kilometers an hour and even slower in some sections, winding up in and out over the Hay River itself. And a lot of the times too, we actually had to stop and, uh, and clear the track. There were just probably a, a dozen or so more times where we had to get out and clear brush from the actual track. So just to visually show you on a map, guys, um, this is the HEMA maps here on my phone, but it's just giving you an idea of the country that we're traveling through here. As I said, south of uh, Lake Caroline, and we're punching down towards the intersection of the Madigan Line and the Hay River Track, which was about 100 or so kilometers. We finally made it to the intersection of the Madigan Line and the Hay River track. It's been a bloody long day. This track is uh, really, really slow going. It caught me by surprise, but right behind me is the Madigan Line. This is the one that we'd like to do next year. Madigan Line is the longest crossing across the Simpson Desert. It's about 750 k's between fuel stops, whether it's Mount Dare to Birdsville or Alice Springs to Birdsville. So it's a big, big run, the Madigan line. We're gonna just continue about another hour down the track. and Or, or at least try to. Try to, because we're bloody exhausted. Um, and we kind of want to get to uh, where the Madigan starts to head further east towards um, the Queensland border. That's the way we're heading down into Birdsville. It's actually quite nice out here now. Yeah, it is. So you've got some tracks here. They're, they're our tracks. Yeah, but those other ones aren't. There's a car that's come out of here, and that looks as though it might have been today. Yeah, I just was looking at these tracks. You can see there's our tracks. You can see there's our tracks we've just come in. That's the uh, northern section of the hay. We've come in through here. Big LC tracks here. Just trying to work out how long. They look reasonably fresh. Yeah, they are. They are fresh. Yeah, so. And as you can see, just down there to the left, there's a meteorite that's hit the uh, hit the ground. <laughs> yeah, pretty big anthill. That's fairly impressive, isn't it? Cecil Madigan camp number 16. This tree here was blazed by Cecil Madigan. Was it blazed by Cecil? Yeah, in 1939. So it was actually blazed by him? Yes, it says that on the plaque. Yeah, okay, all right. So yeah, it was blazed. And what, what does blaze mean? Well, it was some sort of, 
in, like scripture put into the tree but it's all grown over you can't actually see it anymore um, and there's even there's a little um there's a bit of a book here as well you can actually sign your name and say that you were here <laughs> today's date is so, the last person to come through was yesterday there you go the so 20 29th of December uh, sorry the 20 it's the 29th October. of October so what are we are what are we 29 of 10 29 10 what'd be right Mick and Marcus Jervoy station um, Hay River tractor Birdsville solo in 200 series Land Cruiser searching for adventure there you go we're about to um, turn off the Hay River track here and head east on the Madigan line and then we will find camp very soon. Off in the bloody distance here though, it's pretty beautiful. Rain clouds and storm and rain happening, but the wind is coming from the north here, so hopefully it's pushing it that way, away from us. And there's nothing behind us where the wind's coming from. Anyway, we need to find camp. <laughs> But so we're on the Madigan line now. We've left the Hay River track and we're um, on the eastern section of the Madigan line. So we're not heading down to Popal Corner on this trip and doing the southern part of the Hay River track. And uh, we're coming in back into sand dune country here, obviously. So we need to find camp. So we're going to probably just pop over a few dunes and find a camp that looks suitable. There's a bit of a storm and rain cloud off to the south there. So hopefully that holds. ourselves set up here in a swale just over a, one of the many dunes here and it's bringing back memories of last year's trip so we're finally getting into the uh back into that sort of iconic sand dune country of the simpson um and off the hay as you know so having a bit of a low key night tonight guys it's been a, a pretty pretty long day we were going to cook a lamb roast but we've been having a bit of trouble finding wood so it's only going to be a small fire for a bit of ambient lighting later on but not enough to cook a lamb roast so mick is cooking some bangers and uh, we'll have that in, what are we having it in? Wraps, wraps. With, with a bit of salad yeah. and some sauce. Bangers in wraps and a bit of salad, a couple of quiet beers, and that's going to be us for tonight. But for now, it's good night, and we'll see you in the morning. Cheers, guys. Good morning. Another beautiful bloody morning here in the Simpson Desert. The sunrise this morning was um, it was yet again pretty pretty beautiful and because it was a bit of cloud about always adds to the texture of the sky out here and, and just the beautiful sand dunes, that rich red dirt. You can't bloody beat a sunrise here in the Simpson Desert and if you've been out here before you'll certainly know what I'm talking about. Can't beat it. So we're all packed up here. We're going to keep heading uh, east here on the um, Madigan line and in about 30 kilometres we'll hit the Queensland Northern Territory border. Then from there we'll cross into the Munga Theory National Park and then soon after another probably 30 k's we'll then leave that National Park and enter a private cattle station, uh, Adrena Downs I think it is called. Anyway, rightio, let's get going.
The Simo guys, do yourself a favour. Get yourself out here. Having a bloody blast. Woohoo! Can't see anything. Can you still hear it? Yeah. It, it sounds like a screw. Yeah, it sounds like metal on metal. I reckon it's your exhaust. You reckon? Yeah, I do. There it is, that more. There it is. That. Just uh, jumped out of the car to collect the drone and when I opened up the back car door, I could hear a rattle. Um, we think maybe... what One of the exhaust mounts probably is yeah. just a bit loose. I've personally got no idea, but I don't like rattles. You can hear it now? It's very mild, mate. It'll, it'll be an exhaust mount. So we'll keep, we'll keep an eye on that. The thing, guys, I just noticed when I came out here, there is a bit of a surface slit in the tie and the sidewall. So it's, you know, it's reason looks reasonably deep, Mick. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. And, th and this is an example as to why, that's an example as to why you need good quality um, tires with these sidewalls. I think these are three ply. Yeah. Um, so you're gonna get that durability. Um, we've gone over a lot of rocks on the way here. So maybe we've, um, one of them's one of them's jabbed into the side of the tyre, possibly. All Madigan's camps along the Madigan line, they're all marked with a star picket and a little little plaque. Give you an idea where it is. This one here is uh, camp number, uh, number 17, and we're almost to the Queensland border. We're probably only, I don't know, a couple of kilometres from the Queensland border. We're in Northern Territory, obviously, at the moment. And clearly, he selected this camp here. It's open, it's wide. Plenty of uh, Gigi trees around, and... Uh, yeah, you can understand why he chose this spot, so. Anyway, we're gonna head to the uh, border and have morning tea. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, let's go. Back into Queensland. We've made it to the border and uh, we're going to leave Northern Territory behind and make our way into the Munga Theory National Park. So um, the Northern Territory side of things, you, need, you do need a permit from the uh, Central Lands Council and you also do need a permit for the Munga Theory National Park, which is what we're going to be entering into right now, so which we have. So just to show you where we are, we are right here at the moment. We're gonna come down the Madigan track and then we make our way onto private property, um, Adina Downs cattle station. We'll come down and into Birdsville. Just wanted to do a bit of a quick shout out to one of our youngest and most loyalist of fans here on Searching for Adventure. And that's a big shout out to yourself, Finn. G'day mate, how you going? From, from Mick and I here in the middle of the Simpson Desert, we appreciate you following us on Searching for Adventure, and we know you love watching the episodes. So from the Simpson Desert, Finn, we say good day, and we'll see when we get back. Anyway, thanks, mate. Cheers.
<laughs> she just hit 40 guys and she's windy and we're having a bloody ball. <laughs> So that storm that we've been uh, talking about, it's now started to possibly appear up here in the northwest. And uh, we've got the wind coming from the northwest at the moment. So I'll just give you guys a bit of a look as we come up to this journey. We won't see too much with the GoPro. Something we're doing about every hour or so, we're driving across a lot of brush and a lot of dead spinifex and stuff because we're having a bit of a look underneath the car because it is so hot it actually just cracked 41 so just making sure there's no brush or bushes or uh, dry branches and that sort of stuff under underneath where it's really hot where the dpf is in the car another check and they're all clear, but you can see, I think that's pretty important to do when it is hot. Um, just, just check every hour or so you haven't got something caught underneath because there's a lot of brush uh, sometimes when you're traveling on these tracks. Anyway, it's bloody hot out here. I'm getting back in the car. I've just come to a uh, quite a sort of large salt pan um, and clearly through the middle here, um, has got quite boggy. We're kind of hugging the uh, the edge and not going through it. Quite a few of these uh, large salt pans, salt lakes. Very windy out here, guys. Um, one thing you don't want to do is come across these. You can break through that crust of salt and dig right down into the, um, I guess it's clay beneath it. Um, and I'll just show you guys what it looks like. We've come around the perimeter, but you can see at some stage people have come through. We're out here on our own. It's 38 degrees, and we haven't seen one car, and we've done a, about 450 k's. So if you can, you want to avoid coming through these uh, salt pans. Just in front of me, uh, clearly someone's got bogged here. This big top. Really soft. Yeah, it's, it's soft. It. Yeah, the top crust is still pretty soft, but clearly, you know, there was a bit of rain out this way about two or three months ago, here in the Simpson Desert. Clearly, someone got bogged right here. There's no doubt about it. And if they were here on their own, holy moly, be pretty difficult to get out. Like it, this isn't the deepest one either. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be risking it. No. Yeah, it, it is wet and muddy underneath. So we don't know how many more of these we've got to go. Um, but we're making our way down towards Air Creek and heading further south down on this uh, Adria Downs uh, property. So uh, another, another uh, bit of advice too, you do need permission to travel across the private property here before you come out to the, the Simo and do this particular run. Well, we are in the middle of Air Creek, guys. Um, we're still on Adria Downs cattle station, obviously. Um, the homestead's another probably 20 kilometers further south, been making our way south. And uh, you do cross it in this section. We travel a little further uh, south from here, and then we'll kind of get to where that 
bypass track is when you're doing the QAA line out of Birdsfall and if it's uh, if, if it's flowing which is not often there is a track you can do up and it's a little shallower and you come back down I'm not at that spot right here we're further north but pretty bloody impressive another pretty old creek bed I would assume and uh, pretty dusty and dry and it still is about 38 degrees out here at the moment so we're looking to try and find camp in the next hour but we don't want to pull up bloody too early as I said it's still 38 degrees it's 3.30 we were going to find camp at about 3.30 but no, I think we push on a little bit further because it's so bloody hot um, it's not going to be sunset till 7 so we might push on for another hour we might almost get all the way down to the QAA line and uh, by that time hopefully it's just cooled off a little bit fingers crossed otherwise we'll take a dip in the creek otherwise we'll take a dip in the creek yeah well let's go Woo! just doing a check and these uh will will the nuts on these uh spare wheels have come loose again and the other one's really loose the one that we've actually lost one of the bolts um we're almost on the qaa line still pretty warm 39 degrees still So that's the bolt we lost, the one in there. We've still got that bolt, um, but that was a little bit loose. So still on Adria Downs, we're still looking for that camp. It's now mm, 4.30. Yeah, close enough. So we want to find somewhere in the, in the next, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes and crack a bloody cold beer, but how hot is it? I think I'm going to crack one now. <laughs> See you soon. Found camp guys, um, beautiful little spot up against the sand dune here, about halfway on that um, Air Creek bypass road when it floods. Um, so a bit of an easier day tomorrow in the birds fall. And just doing the important stuff first. Making sure we've got plenty of cold water. So we've just been doing this pretty much the whole trip because it has been so hot as you know. It is, it is actually still 39 degrees and a bit of a um, uh, bit of a bit of a stiff breeze as well so anyway this has basically been our setup the last uh, three four days put these in the fridge and then tip them into our water bottles in the front there we've got plenty of water it's one one thing i didn't uh, want to go shy on look at this liquid gold guys you want a bit, Mick? No, nah, no, nah, I'm good. Then we get the cold ones. Fill up the water bottles. <laughs> it's been a good little system. Cheers. Well, this awning just paid for itself. <laughs> yeah, she's still 39. She's a cracker of a day. I, I get it. You shouldn't be in the Simpson Desert. But I explained that earlier, so I'm not gonna go explain it again. We are here and it'll be into birds for tomorrow. Anyway, you saw me just fill the water bottles up. So got that sorted. And then the second priority was the awning, bit of shade and protection from that Western sun. And then the third priority is Cheers. <laughs> the bloody fridge is cracking cold. Really, really, really cold. So um, we've already had one beer, about to crack the second second beer. Flies aren't too bad. So what we've done first up is obviously try and face the car. It's facing west, sun's out there, and we've put the awning up, give us some shade. Don't set up your camp. Even though it's five o'clock, there's no point in setting up the swag or the uh, Oz tent that I'm using. It'll just get bloody hot and just going to exert yourself even more. Having a cold one. <laughs> it's got the bare minimum going on, guys. A um, couple of chairs, the um, awnings up, plenty of uh, cold water in the fridge, and we'll put the camping gear up when, uh, when it cools off a little bit. So until then, cheers.
guys from Adrena Station, Cattle Station. It's a big cheers. Um, we're having a good night. Hope you're enjoying the episode and we're just experiencing this bloody beautiful sunset up on here on this sand dune right next to camp. It has started to cool off a bit, which is good. What's it down to, about 32? Oh, probably 35 to be honest, but yeah. it's much better than 42. Yeah, it peaked at 42 today. So it's cooled off, there's a bit of a breeze, a couple of cold beers, lamb roast is in the camp oven. What more could one ask for? Anyway, cheers guys. And if you get a couple of these on, yeah, a bit of a uh, cold bucket of water on the go. Oh, yeah, excuse checking the phone while you're there, see if I've had any missed calls or text messages. There's no missed calls, <laughs> <laughs> I've had no signal for about three days, guys. And I gotta be honest with you, it's bloody fantastic. Switch your phone off for three days, Whew, wouldn't be dead for quids. Epson bloody desert lamb roast, far out. Doesn't matter if it's hot. <laughs> lamb roast in any conditions. Oh, your lamb roast, guys. It is the signature dish. I can smell it. Yeah. So can I. Got a bit of a story to tell you about what happened last night. It wasn't fun. It's pretty wild and it's a little scary. Alright, my tent's now busted. Last night, I pitched my tent right here. But it's not there now. Basically what happened, we had a good night, had a good meal, um, had a crack and fire, had a couple of beers. Wasn't a late one, at about 10 o'clock or so, um, we headed off into bed. And there was a little bit of lightning off in the distance, which, you know, it did was happening yesterday, but it was so far off, it looked to be hundreds of kilometres away. We went to bed not really thinking this storm was going to come this way, but buddy, how wrong we were. I was laying there, I couldn't get to sleep. I was watching the storm, it, was, it looked pretty nice. And then um, all of a sudden the wind started to pick up and before I knew it, I, um, it was just absolutely howling wind. I don't know how strong the wind was. And I was laying in the tent and uh, trying to keep the tent down. And I was laying right at the edge of the door. That's where the wind was coming from, that direction where the door was. All right, my tent's now busted. My tent is now busted. The pole's busted back here. And I'm in a bit of body. This is not fun. This is really, really windy, guys. And I'm doing all I I'm gonna lose my tent. Uh, 
Jesus, Mick, I'm going to go over. I'm holding, I'm, I'm doing my best to hold this tent down. But I don't know how much longer I can hold this for. Tell you now, it was the most terrifying camping moment that I've had in a, in a pretty long time with regards to weather. I was absolutely petrified. I thought I was going to be tumbled away. Um, and as you just saw there, um, as I was re recording the aluminium strut, it snapped. And and then I decided that I'm going to have to get out of this bloody, bloody tent, which I did. And then the tent blew away. Uh, and it blew away about 50 metres behind me, up behind this tree. It was, um, it was pretty ordinary, to be honest. Well, the first thing I realised was I was dead to the world and you woke me up by yelling out. And Just Mick, I'm going to go over. I had the flaps open to both sides of the swag because it was so hot. It was still in the 30s last night. Um, so I pulled one flap down and before I knew it, my swag's lifting up. Managed to get the other one down but had it open just enough so that if I got blown away as well, I was able to still get out. But yeah, was, I've never experienced anything like it. I reckon... Those winds would have been up around 100k an hour and not a problem at all. And it probably only lasted about, I'd say about 20 minutes. Yeah, about that. About 20 minutes and it was more wind than anything else. It was like a little mini cyclone. It was bloody terrifying. It was all strapped down too and- Yeah, um, I had it I had it all pegged. I had four pegs down last night. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, anyway. Anyway, so. This morning it's going to be uh, pack up camp. We've got about uh, 12 k's to do down to the QAA line and then we head left, we head east and it's 18 kilometres to Big Red. So only a small day today into Birdsville. It's been four days on the track. In search of a new swag for you. In search of a new swag. We'll see you soon. <laughs> So we've made it onto the QAA line guys, uh, the straight run into Birdsville. It's only 18 kilometres to Big Red and just out to our left. Which is where we've come from. Which is where we've come from. There is another massive band coming in from the north. I, I don't know which direction it's going, but it looks bloody horrible. It looks worse than yesterday. It, yeah, it does. <laughs> We don't have a lot of time. Um, as you can see behind me, this massive band's coming in. We're about, I don't know, 20, half an hour from Big Red, um, or give, give or take. So don't have a lot of time to be setting cameras up and, 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 and filming this last little section. We've got to get to Big Red before this ginormous band comes in bloody behind us here. What an exciting trip though. Um, but yeah, it's got the heart racing at the moment. We don't want to get caught in this big storm. <laughs> Let's keep going. starting to uh, get a little bit scary guys it's um, heavy thunder a lot of uh, full lightning and I reckon we're only probably 10, 15, 10 or 15 minutes from Big Red but it I've got to get my line here a lot of these clay plans in between some of the uh, dunes are washed out and again we just don't have time to set up all the cameras to show everything Go. Look at that, it's big red. <laughs> that looks wet, doesn't it? <laughs> Okay, 
You ready? Yep. Hey guys, we made it to Big Red. We just simply did not have time to set up cameras and drones and stuff. I don't know if you can see behind me, we've come across this big clay pan, salt pan, whatever it is. It's wet. Um, we threw it in low range and I've fed income. It was bloody scary. Um, it was bloody scary. Uh, it wasn't Mick. You did well, like we'll slip and slide and fishtailing, but not too bad. It's fairly, it was fairly firm, I think. Fairly firm, but it was just nerve wracking. Some people have been getting pretty well bogged in that section just there um, you can see all the water that's still lying around down there yeah so but here we are guys on the top of big red big girl down here the big 200 so you got a big buddy this morning coming in to big red Right now, guys, that's a wrap. We certainly hope you enjoyed this Hay River track and the Madigan line. Um, we've had a ball bringing this to you. And um, until next time, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.